Okay, so this is a, uh, the fourth one. We talk about DSC, TGA, and DMA. The last one is a TMA. TMA is an instrument that essentially allows us to measure the thermal expansion co coefficient uh, with values, and it's very important for the st people studying the composites and, and so on. It's measured essentially the expansion of the material. And But let me talk about the name itself and the, the thermal means we are changing the temperature. You are measuring the mechanical ways of uh, something that uh, measuring the uh, properties. So in the essentially this mechanical is, is has somehow has a meaning of deformation or expansion has this meaning. You know, in other words, it is not oscillation. Right? It is not oscillation be because of oscillation is used in the DMA, and then the analysis is analysis. So like I said, the TMA is uh, really the good tool for us to quantitatively, quantitatively measure the, the CTE value, which is a coefficient of thermal expansion. In the values of the CTE is typically in the unit of micrometer per uh, uh, degree C, and for the sample that is uh, has a no, known uh, known thicknesses. So for for like uh, so this is a the way is over meter thick sample as an example. So it's, it is a ppm uh, ranges. So they call they sometimes they call just a ppm per degree C because that's just a value looks like. So it is, this is an enclosed system where the temperature is being controlled and then the, well, we are just uh, looking at the way that how to measure this. And I wanted to show you this, the two different ways to looking at the di displacement. I like this figure the, uh, in the brochure, in the TA instrument. And if you look at closely, this is a, what is called a penetration. So this one has a little sharp thingy. Uh, it's very sharp. Um, I think they're made out of the quartz. And they, it's, it's, a, it's a sticking out. And then you are, this is, a, I think that this is a thermocouple to measure the temperature near to the, sam to the stage, uh, to the sample. And uh, what you do is uh, you are putting your sample right here and you bring this one down until it it touches, right? So now let's have, have a look at it where this the penetration looks like. So here, you're looking at the penetration uh, loading. So you keep certain pressure, and then and you you see this uh, this probe is go deeper into the sample and kind of stop and just continue to go. Okay. So by doing so, you can measure that uh, this sample has a, the probe was able to get it into the sample, right? So the, this, your, your probe, this probe that is a sharp, sharp probe, if you look at the, I mean, if you look at from the side, I think that it looks like this. This is a side view. So this one was able to go deep, deep inside of the sample when your sample is just you know, sitting like that, eventually they, they were able to go in. So that's how they, they were able to make these uh, cases. Uh, I am not so sure about this, what's this TS sample, TS degree C. It must be very, very much softening, you know, something really softening of the sample, and this case is, you know, this very go much deeper into the sample, right? 
So they are, you are measuring the essential displacement, and uh, by doing so, you can uh, can measure that. And so this one is actually a uh, penetration experiment. You don't need to measure the overall sample thicknesses. I think that it doesn't matter that the sample is thick or not, just the penetration by your sharp uh, your penetration tip is going to be pretty much the similar. Okay? Uh, the one that is more imp of an imp uh, interest in the, uh, the TMA is what is called the expansion uh, one. The expansion one is uh, something showing up here. So this is an expansion, and this one is is nothing but just a flat, okay, flat uh, quartz that is a with a known uh, thermal expansion constant is has been already known. And then what you do is now. You're, you're putting your sample here. You're moving your probe station down here. And then you, the whole thing is, is, is a pushing to the sample. The whole uh, the probe stages with the flat surfaces. Okay, this is your sample. Pushing it. So then as the temperature goes up, thermal expansion can be measured by the displacement, right? From the displacement, you have to kind of compensate. You have to move these things up and up and up as the temp uh, temperature is became higher and higher. So this is a graph to, to show how the temperature is changing. And, and then here is a slow rise of the, the thickness increase, and then is a faster faster uh, rise in the thickness increase. And so this is a where we call the TG. And if you look at that, at the temperature below the TG, it is a moving 90 micron per meter thick samples per degree C, whereas uh, this one is moving about um, 200 micrometer per meter, so um, per degree C sample. So this is a, what the value of a CTE and the glassy state and uh, the rubbery state. Right? So this is a 90, you can think about 90 micrometer per meter over degree C window. So you have, you have essentially that's how much of the things are expanding here. And then eventually when you go up here, and this is a, another, I guess, a softening uh, transition temperature that is shown up here. It's just much more expanding much rapidly. But this is a rubbery state, and this is a glassy state. Okay, so uh, this instrument is why it's so important, and, and there, are, there are different methods. Uh, there are there are people using it, and then this is on uh, different using the different probe, and I can you know I just wanted to show you these different ways of the values, and that they are essentially the CTE is measurement of that, and this is um, now thicknesses about uh, I think it's about uh, 10 micron, 7 micron, and then the heating rate is 5 degree per minute. And then you can essentially move this whole expansion, this one, mechanically adjusted, right? So you're moving these stages up, up uh, based on the expansion as the expansion is going to occur. And this one, I, I want to close up with uh, these uh, important remarks on this. Uh, the CTE value for silicon is very small. So Paul, this is you know silicon is a hardly ex expanding anything, whereas a CTE value for the polymers uh, typically that's a quite expanded quite quite a lot. I mean we you have seen these values of something in the ranges about uh, ten micron to hundred microns, and the, those are the are the values of, of those. And uh, if you have about hundred micron. Um, so this is an this value is essentially hundred 
micrometer divided by meter. So that's that's a say so that's a uh, ten to the minus fourth, right? And per uh, Kelvin per degree C. So that you can you can think about that way as well. And that's a quite uh, big changes and. And uh, this is a picture that I was able to find out, and uh, uh, what this is a very important for the semiconducting uh, silicon processing. When you have a silicon wafer, and then when you have a uh, cured, uh, curing has happened, and then upon the curing, and you we are forming the uh, polymers, and if your thermal expansion constant do not match. During the heat and cooling process, and the, the thermal, right, the conventional here means of actually the thermal. By thermally, you can cure it. You have to cure it at a higher temperature, such as a 200 degrees C, 300 degree, 250 degrees C, and when you're cooling it down to 250 degrees C to room temperature, you are talking about delta T in the ranges of. Let, let's just say the for the sake of the uh, simple calculation, 200 degrees C, delta T is about 200 Kelvin, right? For 200 Kelvin, the discrepancy, this one, which is in the ranges about 10 to the minus 6 for Kelvin and versus uh, 10 to the minus 4. So this is, a you know, two orders of magnitude differences. So therefore, uh, because of that, if this is a sample wafer, you have a silicon wafer, you put a, uh, let's say, something like, uh, this is for the provide, providing the uh, layers of a polymer for the packaging. Uh, this is typically, let's say, 50 micron thick, and then you have enough crossing polymer sample, and then this one is essentially called a, Warpage, so your your things are being buckled up because of the mismatch in the CTE. CTE mismatch. That's a problem, and that that will uh, will be a warpage of a silk wafers. And if this is a case, then then this uh, polymer dielectric, right? Polymer dielectric. Is not going to be useful, so they have they they have to develop the better method, either by making the delta T small. So mean, which means a third curing. If you can cure this one at 150 degrees C, not 200, not to 250, and then there will be a the the warpage will be much less. And or this like this one, I think they are trying to show. Instead of uh, doing the heat, why don't can you do it at much lower temperature using the UV light? If you do that, and you probably uh, do not develop any stresses due to the thermal uh, expansion constant uh, mismatch. Okay, so the CTE value is this much important in the many uh, application, and it can be measured by quantitatively, quantitatively by this method. Uh, using the uh, TMA, thermal uh, mechanical analysis.